Someone reported that they found your son collapsed outside your apartment. He was taken to the hospital, but you'll have to come with us for questioning. Um, I'm really sorry, but there's been a misunderstanding. We don't have time for your excuses, you need to come with us. Please listen, I'm not married and I don't have any children. My name is Ri Kobayashi. I'm 28 years old and working as a freelance writer. I'm living in a two-bedroom apartment in a family-friendly area. I'm working from home, but I live alone, so I have no trouble getting on with my work. The apartment is a little big for one person to live in alone, but there's a reason for that. I only started living here with my ex-boyfriend when we were still together and planning to get married. Unfortunately, we ended up breaking up just six months into our cohabitation. It seems that living together really does help you realize a lot of things about each other. And I found out that he would watch gaming videos loudly on YouTube in the middle of the night. It was difficult for me to sleep when he did that. And even though I tried to be patient, I just got more and more tired of his antics. In the end, I got sick of arguing with him and I told him I wanted to break up. He moved out and I stayed in the same apartment. For a few weeks after we broke up, I was pretty depressed. But after some time had passed, I was able to think of it more positively. I was able to see that we were lucky we found out that we weren't meant for each other before we got married and not after. Moreover, I was delighted to have some time to myself again. I was enjoying being single and free and felt that I didn't need any guys around for a while. Ever since, I've been living in this apartment alone. It's more than enough space for a single woman, but I earn enough to cover the rent by myself, so I haven't had any problems financially. Besides, I felt it would be a waste to move out just six months after moving in and decided to take my time finding a new place to live. That's why I'm probably the only single person living in this entire apartment block. Most of the other inhabitants are people that have children or are couples living together because of the easy access to the local schools, station, and supermarket. Among those inhabitants, there's one person that I've been talking to a lot recently. Her name is Ayako Takahashi, and she lives on the floor above mine. She's in her mid-30s and a stay-at-home mom. Good morning, Rie. How are you? Good morning, Ayako. I'm great. It's really hot today, isn't it? It seems that the time I go out to take a walk and the time that Ayako comes back from taking her son to kindergarten overlaps. So we often bump into one another at the entrance of the apartment block. As a result, we've gotten to talking more and more often about the weather, about her son, and about nothing in particular. But we only talk for a few minutes at a time. And even though we've exchanged phone numbers, we haven't messaged each other at all. So I wouldn't say that we're very close. Our relationship is nothing more than that of two neighbors who are friendly. However, a while after we had exchanged phone numbers, I got a message from Ayako. Hello, Rie? How are you? I'm messaging because I've got a favor to ask. Do you have some time to talk right now? Yes, of course, I have some time. What is it? The truth is, I've been invited to go shopping with some friends this Sunday. It's the first time I'll be able to see them in years, and I was really hoping I could go. But the problem is that Naoki's kindergarten isn't open on the weekends. I need someone to watch him, and I was wondering if you could take care of him for the day. Oh, I'd love to help, but I've actually got work to do. But you're working from home, right? You were saying just the other day that working freelance means that your time is much more flexible. It's true, I said that, but that doesn't mean that I can drop my work. What about your husband? He went out for a business trip just a few days ago. It's just me and Naoki for the entire month, so I hope you can understand. My parents' house is too far and we don't have money for a babysitter. Please, I really need this day off. I'll be sure to thank you and I'll be home by the evening. All right, if you really insist, I can babysit Naoki. Like I mentioned earlier, Ayako has a son in kindergarten. His name is Naoki, and he's four years old. I've met him a few times before, 
So it's not like we were complete strangers. However, Naoki is a very energetic little boy, and that's an understatement. If I were to be honest, I would say that he's prone to temper tantrums. Naoki, please listen to me. We're going home. No, I don't want to. Buy me the toy. Buy it. I often come across a scene like this in the hallways, where Naoki would make a fuss over something he wanted. My main impression was that he was loud and didn't listen to what his parents told him. And that's why I was so worried when Ayako asked me to babysit him. I didn't have the confidence to keep him under control. But I thought it would just be one day and agreed to watch him. On the day, however. Hey, I'm bored. Let's play hide and seek. Sorry, Naoki. I have to get back to work. You can wait just a little bit. No, I don't want to wait. I want to play hide and seek. Oh, look. Punch Rangers is on TV. I heard that's your favorite. I don't want to watch TV. I want to play hide and seek. All right, let's play hide and seek. You go hide. He was impossible to keep in check, and I had no choice but to go along with all the things he wanted to do. When he complained that he was bored of playing indoors, I had to take him to the local park. And when he demanded that he was hungry for cake, I took him to the local restaurant to give him what he wanted. Before I knew it, the sun had already set and it was starting to get dark outside and I still hadn't been able to finish any of my work. I thought I would have to work until I went to sleep, but it wasn't going to be that easy. There was one more surprise waiting in store. Um, Ayako, it's almost six. Where are you? When will you come and pick up Naoki? Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't realize it was already that late. No problem. When will you be back? Oh, the thing is, we went shopping, but we wanted to talk a little more, so we decided that we wanted to have some drinks, too. I'm going to be a little later than I thought. I'm sorry, but that's a little troublesome for me. I've still got work to do, and I need to get back to it. Oh, don't worry about that. You're working from home, aren't you? Well, yes, but... Don't worry. I'll be back before midnight. It's just a few more hours. You're gonna be that late? What's the problem? Just think of it as practice for when you have your own children. It's a great learning experience. Anyway, we're almost at the bar, so I can't talk anymore. Thank you. Ayako had promised that she would be back by the evening, but now she was suddenly telling me that she wouldn't be home until midnight. It was obvious that she had some mistaken idea that freelance workers had plenty of time on their hands. I was furious that she hadn't held to her first promise and almost lost my temper, but there was nothing I could do. Throwing Naoki out into the hall was out of the question, so my struggle with this little monster was to continue. I had to feed him dinner, let him have a bath, and play with him more until he finally felt tired enough to sleep. And getting him to sleep was no easy feat. He was too excited about being in a new environment and only finally started to drift off to sleep when the clock chimed 10. Time passed by, and when the clock finally turned 12, Ayako turned up. Thank you so much. I had such a great time thanks to you. Where's my little boy? <laughs> Good for you. I'm glad I could help. She was in a drunken and happy mood when she finally came to pick up her son. He was fast asleep by then. So she had to carry Naoki home in her arms, stumbling as she went. I was already exhausted from taking care of Naoki, but I didn't have time to rest. I had to get back to work. I hadn't even gotten halfway on any of the work I had planned to complete that day. I rushed back to my desk and stayed there until the early hours of the morning to finish my writing, only realizing that I had been awake all night. When I saw that the sun had risen, it took an all-nighter to finish, and I swore I would never babysit for Ayako ever again. But Ayako had other ideas. She must have thought that she had found the perfect pushover, because just one week later, Rie, thank you so much for babysitting the other day. You're welcome. I hope Naoki was a good boy while he was with you. Uh, yeah. He was very energetic. Oh, really? He was saying that he had a good time staying at your place. He's very fond of you. 
I'm glad to hear that. So, I was wondering if you would take him again this Sunday. Another friend of mine suggested that we go out to have lunch together. I told her I can't because of Naoki, but she was begging me. She says that's the only day that she's free. I'd love to help you out, but I'm afraid I can't. I'm actually busy that day. But you work from home, don't you? I'm sure you can manage. I may work from home, but that doesn't mean that I'm not busy. I've got work to do. Oh, if you say so. As you can see, she had the nerve to ask me to babysit for her again, without any care for my own plans. I thought I had managed to avoid the worst case scenario, but I was obviously too naive. On the morning of the day, she had asked me to babysit Naoki without any warning. I'm really sorry. I couldn't say no to my friend. I'm going to be late, so please take care of Naoki for me. I answered the door and regretted it immediately. I had unwittingly given Aoko the chance to force her son on me. I had no time to tell her I was busy before she gave me her excuses and ran away, leaving Naoki on my doorstep. Like this, I was once again left alone with her little monster. Of course, I couldn't get on with my own work this time either, and spent the day tending to Naoki's whims. And just like the other Sunday, it wasn't until late that night that Ayoko finally came to collect Naoki, and I had no choice but to start my work at midnight. I continued until dawn, until I was finished despite being worn out by playing all day. I decided that I would never open the door to unplanned visitors, especially if the doorbell rang in the morning and swore that I wouldn't let Ayoko have her way the next time she asked me to babysit. But it wasn't long before she messaged me again. Rie, thank you for taking care of Naoki again. You're a great help. It sounds like he had a lot of fun spending time with you. Huh, <laughs> I'm glad he had fun. Anyway, I was wondering if you could babysit again next Sunday. This time, my friends and I are planning to go to a hot spring for the day. We won't be staying overnight, so it'll just be a day trip. Can you watch him again? Next Sunday? Yeah, that's right. Well, I'm sorry. I've got a meeting at the office that day. I'll be leaving home early in the morning and won't be home. You've got a meeting. But you work from home, don't you? I do. But I sometimes have to go into the office to talk about themes and things. Oh. Yes, really. I'm leaving early in the morning and probably won't be home until the afternoon. So I can't take care of Naoki that day. It was a coincidence. But I really did have a business meeting that day. I had always thought of those meetings as a bother, seeing as the trip to the office took a lot of time. But on this occasion, <laughs> I was grateful to have a reason to be out of the house. Then, on the day, I left the apartment early in the morning just as I had planned. I was weary that Aoko might be waiting to push Naoki on me, and couldn't help but check if anyone was waiting to ambush me. But I didn't meet either Aoko or Naoki and hoped that it was because Aoko had finally gotten the hint. To say the least, I was relieved and made my way to the office in a good mood. Once my meeting was over, I decided to have some time to myself and went out to have lunch and made my way home afterwards. I had probably been out for around five hours and had gotten home earlier than I had originally expected. But when I made it to my floor, I found that there were two police officers outside my apartment. I called out to them, wondering what their business was. Someone reported that they found your son collapsed outside your apartment. He was taken to the hospital, but you'll have to come with us for questioning. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. For a second, I was too shocked to reply, but I attempted to correct the officer's mistake. Um, I'm really sorry, but there's been a misunderstanding. We don't have time for your excuses. You need to come with us. Please, listen. I'm not married and I don't have any children. Don't lie. There was a little boy collapsed outside your apartment. We'll listen to what you have to say for yourself at the station. I'm telling you, I don't have any children. That's not my son. I ended up having an argument with a police officer in order to clear my own name. After a while, 
My neighbors came home to find us arguing and thankfully explained to the officers that I didn't have any children. With my neighbor's word, I was no longer suspected of neglecting my own child, and the police finally apologized to me for their behavior. In the hope that I might have an idea of who the child was, they explained what had happened in more detail. Apparently, someone living on the same floor had passed by my apartment and found that a little boy was slumped over in front of my door. It's the middle of a very hot summer, and because he had been outside without any food or water and no way to cool down, it seems that the little boy had been suffering from heat stroke. The man that found him called an ambulance and spoke to the little boy to check if he was conscious. Mommy told me to stay here. According to the man that found him, the boy's voice was already very weak, and without saying any more, fainted soon after. The man assumed that the person living in the apartment must be the little boy's mother, and thought that she had shut her own son out to punish him for something, without any care for how hot it was. After hearing everything from the officers, I thought it was understandable why they might all think that, and was glad that it was made clear that it wasn't my son. However, despite there being no fatal risk to his life, the boy still hadn't regained consciousness, and the doctors were waiting for a parent or guardian to come and collect him. Because of the circumstances, the doctors had contacted the police, suspecting that the little boy might be a victim of child abuse. The police had then made their way to my apartment, where the little boy had been found. Unsurprisingly, the little boy turned out to be Naoki. I didn't have time to waste. I took out my phone, resolved to make the cause of all of Naoki's suffering come down and pay for what she had done. Ayoko, answer the phone right now. It's an emergency. You don't have time to be playing around. Oh, I'm really sorry. I just got on the train. I was having so much fun. I didn't realize that my phone was ringing. It's not the time to be having fun. This is serious. Why on earth did you leave Naoki alone outside my apartment? Oh, I'm sorry. I couldn't say no to my friends. I told you that I would be out of the house for the day, remember? But you're working from home. I thought you were just lying about going to the office for a meeting. I wasn't lying. If you came this morning, you should have realized that I was out. Well, I thought you must have just gone to the store or gone for a walk. Is that why you thought it was okay to leave Naoki alone outside my apartment? I don't see what the big deal is. The big deal? Your son has heat stroke. He almost died. That's the problem here. What? You're lying. It's true. How did he? That's what happens when you leave a four-year-old alone with no food or water and no way to get away from the heat. You told him to wait, so he did. You really call yourself a mother? But I asked you to watch him for the day. I told you that I couldn't watch him. I wasn't lying about the meeting. I really did have to go to the office. If you don't believe me, do you want me to send you some evidence? I'm sure I can get a copy of the sign-in log I filled in at reception. So, Naoki really was outside your door since this morning? Yes, luckily for him. Another tenant found him and called an ambulance before I got home. They were able to save his life, but they're telling me that if he was outside for any longer, he really might have died, and he still hasn't woken up. What on earth were you thinking? You risked your son's life to go out and have fun? Please, please don't tell my husband. You're kidding, right? Your son almost died, and that's all you have to say? And it's too late for that. Late? You didn't. I finally got in contact with your husband a few minutes ago. He's on his way to the hospital right now. It's a good thing I remembered the name of the company he works at when you told me before. I called his company and got them to call him and tell him my phone number. Why would you do that? That's what I want to say. I really couldn't believe that a mother like this actually existed. Before worrying about her son's life, she was more preoccupied with what might happen to her if her husband found out what she had done. Then, a few hours later, Naoki, is he okay? Ayako finally arrived at the hospital that Naoki had been admitted to, but it was far too late for her to start caring. Other than me, there was already someone else in the room. 
It's too late for you to start acting like a good mother, Ayako. He's not okay. Kazuki. I've already heard everything from Miss Kobayashi. I can't believe you could do something so selfish. It was Naoki's father, Kazuki. Naoki was still asleep, so he was doing his best to keep his voice down. But it was clear that he was furious. I... I didn't mean to. You, you don't understand. I'm not interested in your excuses. I'm never letting you anywhere near Naoki ever again. You should leave. Wait, please, just listen to what I have to say. I'm busy, but I'm sure that this gentleman will be happy to listen to everything you have to say. Ma'am, you'll have to come with us. Let's talk at the station. When she finally realized that there was a police officer in the room, her legs gave out, and she was forced to face the reality that he was talking to her. Despite her pleas, she was arrested under suspicion of neglect and child abuse. Over the course of the questioning, the police found out that Ayoko didn't mean to abandon Naoki, and because his condition wasn't severe, and it was clear that she hadn't been abusing him on a daily basis, she had been let off with a stern warning from the police. However, there was one person who couldn't forgive any of Aoko's actions. When he had heard about how she had left Naoki to a stranger so that she could go out to drink, and on another occasion had forced that stranger to babysit Naoki, despite them saying that they couldn't, all of that plus the fact that she had left her son outside a stranger's apartment without their permission had angered Kazuki. No matter how much time passed, he couldn't forgive Aoko's selfish behavior and filed for divorce while Naoki was still in the hospital. Of course, he gained custody of Naoki, and he was able to demand compensation for the hospital bills and mental injury to Naoki. After that, Ayeko would never be able to see Naoki ever again. And because she had gone too far in letting her hair loose, she ended up losing everything. A few days later, Kazuki visited my house to apologize on behalf of his ex-wife. I'm sincerely sorry for all the stress my ex-wife caused you these past weeks. I understand that she got in the way of your work, too, so I hope you'll accept this as compensation for your trouble. You don't have to do this. You just got divorced, and you must be very busy dealing with the proceedings. Please, take it. I'm also at fault for not realizing my wife was lying to me, and that she was going out so often. What do you mean? My wife, my ex-wife, always told me that she was going to take Naoki with her when she went out with her friends. I had no idea. She even told me that the days that they were home late, she had put him to sleep at her friend's house, and told me that she deserved to have some time to herself. I'm surprised her pants didn't catch on fire. Because of my job, I have to go out on business trips quite often, and I wasn't as attentive toward my wife and son as I should have been. But that doesn't mean that it was okay for her to lie to you, and force me into babysitting. What she did was unforgivable, and you shouldn't beat yourself up about it. Thank you for saying that. And there's actually one more thing I'd like to talk to you about, if you have time. Something else? What is it? If you're able to, I think it's best that you move somewhere else, as soon as you can. You think I should move? Why? The truth is, I've had a call from my ex-wife's parents, and they say that Ayako's been raving about how life has been ruined by a woman called Rie. Apparently, she's been quite unstable recently, and is blaming everything on you. What? Seriously? I've already explained everything that happened to her parents, so they'll understand that she's being unreasonable. But I'm worried about what she might do if she gets away from her parents' supervision. I've already made plans for my son and I to move within the month, so I thought that it was best to warn you as well, before it's too late. Is that so? Thank you so much for telling me. I was already thinking about moving, so this is actually perfect timing. I'll get ready to. I'm relieved to hear that. I don't know if we'll ever meet again, but I wish you a peaceful life without any troublesome neighbors. Thank you. I wish you and Naoki all the best, too. After Kazuki's warning, I started looking for a new apartment and began preparing to move as quickly as possible. I was lucky enough to find a pretty nice place straight away, and I was set to move in the week after. During that week, I had managed to pack up all of my things, and on the day of the move, I was ready to take all of my stuff down to the truck when... You bitch! I won't let you get away with this! Ayako! It's all your fault! This all happened because you pretended to be out even though you're just working freelance. Give me my life back. You ruined it all. Ayako appeared out of nowhere and started shouting nonsense as she pounced at me. 
but I managed to get out of the way just in time and avoided her attack. She ended up falling face first where I had previously been standing, cutting her own face in the process. She had caused quite a scene, but that didn't stop her. This is all your fault! I'm sorry, but it seems you've misunderstood something about my work. I'd like to correct that. So would you be good and listen to me for a minute? I'm a freelance writer, so I spend most of my time working from home. I don't have to go to the office as much, but there are occasions where I have to go and have meetings with publication companies and complete interviews for my research. Also, you may be looking down on the fact that I work from home and think that I'm just being lazy, but I actually make a lot of money. In a year, I probably make around $100,000. What? What? People who work freelance don't get as many social benefits as someone working in a company might get. But I earn more than an average office worker does, so I guess it's pretty even. Well, I'm lucky to be able to be earning more than others in my own profession. So I'll be moving to a penthouse apartment that has much better security, a beautiful view, and no annoying neighbors. Damn you! I've lost everything and you! You get to enjoy your life! I'm going to kill you! Yeah, yeah, whatever. Keep on shouting that in prison, where you belong. Hello? Is this the police? There's a woman trying to hurt me. I really think she needs help. You've got to stop her. She says she's going to kill me. Ayako tried to run away, but it seems that she had twisted her ankle when she had fallen. And because she couldn't stand up, desperate to get away, she began crawling on all fours towards the elevator. Unfortunately for her, the police arrived in no time. She was cuffed and pushed into the back of a police car and taken away. This time, she avoided punishment because her attempt to hurt me had failed and ended in just an attempt at injury. But she was escorted home to her parents' house and was given a warning by the police officer right outside the door. That scene was witnessed by one of the neighbors and rumors started flying around about why she had been driven home and lectured by the police. Unable to bear the embarrassment, her parents ended up kicking Ayoko out of their home and moved away themselves. Their home was sold by their lawyer and Ayoko had become homeless, penniless, and unemployed in a matter of days. Not long after, I received a notification from Kazuki through his lawyer saying that Ayoko had disappeared. He's such an honest person. From my experience with Ayoko, I learned that people really can go astray if they're not careful. But thankfully, I think I'll be able to make good use of this story and use it in my own writing in the horror and the thriller genre. I hope that it'll allow me to get some closure. And most of all, I hope you'll enjoy it enough to comment.